Hi everyone, this is Trish Fordyce coming to you again, the uh, Sexual Assault Prevention and Response Program Manager. What we're going to talk about today is what was formerly known as Green Dot, but now is known as Wingman and Leadership Bystander Intervention. Slide. If we all do our part as wingmen and leaders to intervene and set new norms, we can reduce the number of people who are impacted by sexual violence. Now I know that 99.9% .9 of us are not predators, but this is important so we all know what we need to do um, to maintain the standards that we've become used to. Slide. Wingmen, who are they? Those who witness a high risk situation and are in a position to intervene. That's a reactive situation. Wingmen may also define acceptable norms in their units or installation by deciding what behaviors will and will not be tolerated. That's a proactive situation. Wingmen have two important roles to play in addressing sexual violence. One, to react. React when you see warning signs of sexual assault to ensure no one is harmed. Next, clearly communicate. We're communicating that sexual assault is not acceptable and that you, as an individual, expect all air and space professionals to look out for one another. Slide. Role modeling, having conversations about appropriate behavior, expressing support in meetings, trainings, or among your peers are ways you can help. Next. Recognizing warning signs. The first step to intervening. You may know the potential perpetrator, victim, or maybe even both. What you notice can change depending on your relationships with the individuals involved, if they're friends, if they're family members, or if they're someone who's a superior um, or a subordinate. Remember, all genders are at risk for sexual violence. We each may notice different warning signs. The takeaway is we should each take action when we see a behavior that concerns us or crosses acceptable lines. Slide. Common warnings include using alcohol or drugs to incapacitate someone. So if we're at a party and you see someone feeding someone drinks, um, trying to get them intoxicated, that would be a warning sign. Testing or violating boundaries, touching someone in an inappropriate manner or telling off color jokes, separating someone from friends, coworkers, or peers in social settings. These are examples of warning signs. Intimidating someone by using voice or body language. That could be a quid pro quo, this for that, in say a superior subordinate situation. Making threats, using physical force, engaging in unwanted physical or sexual contact as part of hazing or in setting group norms. This can be seen sometimes at boot camp um, or new schools when you're going to them when you have typically an older person and a younger person who is more vulnerable. Slide. Other warning signs include, as I mentioned earlier, pushing drinks on someone, lacing someone's drink with a drug, uh, such as Rohypnol, Roofies, getting a reputation for being sexually violent, intimidating, or creepy, targeting someone that a person may have power over related to age, rank, etc., which I mentioned before, making sexual comments that are inappropriate to the setting or relationship at work, say, for example, seeming preoccupied with another person in a romantic or sexual way, engaging in sexual contact with someone who is asleep or passed out, I'm sure that we all know that's not okay. There's no consent. Engaging in any sexual activity that is not wanted. Next slide. Intervening. Everyone has barriers to intervening sometimes. We have personal barriers, social barriers, and organizational barriers. So let's talk about that for a moment. Personal barriers are things such as fear of embarrassment or retaliation, fear of escalation or getting hurt, or being uncertain what to do. Sometimes you don't want to be that person who interferes with something that you may not be sure of. Social barriers, being concerned with how airmen in your unit, friends or other people will react if you do get involved. And then organizational barriers, concern that getting involved could have a negative impact on your career, rank or someone else's career. What is important is that we each take action when we see a behavior that concerns us. So it's the old um, see something, say something, uh, be a bystander, be an upstander, take care of your wingmen, take care of each other. Next slide. The intervention, three Ds, direct, delegate, and distract. Choose an intervention option that is most realistic for you, despite the barriers. Direct, address the situation yourself by approaching any of the people involved. Say, for example, you are at a social event and you see someone 
getting a little flirty with another individual and you feel that that is inappropriate, you can go up and say, hey, um, maybe we should go over here and talk for a moment and separate the two. Delegate, you can get someone else to intervene, a friend of yours maybe who knows the individual uh, on a personal level. Um, supervisor, first sergeant friends, bartender, chaplain, etc. Those people who might have a reason to um, intervene. Distract. Create a distraction that will diffuse or interrupt the situation. You could ask someone to drive you home, ask to borrow a phone, or interrupt and start a conversation. I know um, an example that actually happened one time. Um, several people were at a bar who were in the military, and uh, one individual saw another member becoming too friendly with someone and asked the bartender to close the bar. It was very late, so the bartender said, last call, no more drinks, and everybody went home. Next slide. Creating a healthy climate. Prevention is not limited to intervening when you notice warning signs. It includes setting norms, social norms, which promote respect and make sexual violence less likely to happen. Three important norms which help reduce sexual violence are as follows. Sexual assault will not be tolerated. Everyone deserves to be treated with respect. Every human being, every individual. Everyone is expected to play a part in prevention. So we are all each other's eyes and ears. Consider different contexts to communicate that sexual violence prevention efforts are important to you, such as social media, work life, and your personal or social life. I know, for example, on my Facebook page, <clears throat> I have um, shared the It's On Us movement and for Sexual Assault Awareness Month I've shared different events and activities that go on to show my support uh, for <clears throat> prevention. Norms are set by small decisions. What is something you can say or do today to promote a healthy climate of respect? Next slide. And again, this is Bo. If you ever need to come and get a pet or play ball, he's always willing. Thank you.